We should be live. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I didn't check my audio, but it looks like it should be on. Josh trying to decide if we should wear the hat or not. <laughs> yes, I didn't have a hat on all day, but it's, uh, there you go, still. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Nicole may be in and out tonight. It's hard to say. She was at the vet today with our sick older kitty. Get, pets get old, man. It gets expensive. But they're kids, you know. They're, they're not kids. They're like our, as close as we have to our version of that. But. So she may be in a little bit. At least she'll say hello, she says. But they, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So tonight, since Nicole's not here as well, taking the opportunity to do some more work on the moon buggy. Last week we ran this. I haven't touched it since then. So if you saw it at all, that's exactly how it sits. I'm going to build up the shocks for it. And... I hope to get the steering link all set together, uh, you know, drag link, tie rod, because this is a bell crank steering. Servo sits back there hidden, and then it runs this bell crank out front. Got that. Uh, also, we'll try and throw drive shafts in this. I've got the deluxe portal transmission in there. That's the whole tranny, that little guy. But it's just installed with one screw through the bottom at the moment and that's it so we're gonna work on that probably try and get the motor bolted in installed you know oh this week we deserve shocks you sure <laughs> you're right last week cut you cut you off but i didn't touch it since then so you can feel complete now that we see it i'm going to be running s8e shocks i'm going to be running the uh factory machined aluminum bodies not the tie nitride or sorry we will be running tie nitride shafts but just the or wait am i no i'm not i can't remember what i decided i know i'm using the blue machined shock caps i thought i was going to do shafts though Um, evidently, I am a liar. Seriously, I thought I was going to do the tie nitride shafts and um, machine pistons as well, but evidently, that was not my plan when I thought about it. So, okay. <laughs> Thing. I, I made these decisions last week, and last week, Josh, and this week, Josh, do not necessarily always agree. You better have your shock stuff together, mister. Yeah. It's liquid death. Sounds intriguing. Oh, it is uh, just water. That is water. It's not even sparkling water. It is just water water. But it's quite tasty water. This one, I mean, this one's not even, like I said, not even carbonated, so... Exciting? No, probably not to most. Stay hydrated, folks. Let's build some shocks. <laughs> no shock facials tonight. <laughs> Let's hope. Uh, I am going to be building this without external springs also because uh, the moon buggies usually run uh, like a form of an air shock and they don't have it's vodka Russian? Is vodka Russian for water? I know. So we're building these in a pretty simple manner, but I am, where's my shock pliers? There they are. These are my, I say shock pliers, they're my E-clip pliers. Even though these come with the cartridge pre-assembled at the bottom. I am actually going to 
disassemble that cartridge and get everything super lubricated. Because I also like to put the shock shaft through without it compressed. It's not necessarily necessary, but something I like to do. Johnny Five, no disassemble. Um, I feel like, did everything come out or just that? I think it's just that, that's okay. So. We are going to get our, there we go. Rings coming out. Come on, there we go. Whole cartridge out. You got a better chance of damaging something doing that than if you just left it alone. But, oh. Jeremiah, thanks sir. Josh, are you planning on getting UC Fab's new cage? I got the VS410 skid installed on my kids at CX now. I just need to get Axel's links installed. So his new cage is a version of this kind of. He's doing the prickle cage. This is the moon buggy. The prickle's just a little bit of a diff, or like a slightly larger type deal. Um, I don't, I probably won't do that one just because this is the, I, I like this one here. So I, I like this. I don't know that uh, I need another one that's almost the same. I like my uh, UC Fab cages, my carnivores right there. And then this one. So those are the two that I'll keep for now. Also, these cages are not inexpensive, so um, having two that are very similar is not, you know, I'll spread out my investment. It's <laughs> a little more. And Gunner, thank you, sir. Uh, tonight's code, Josh likes tiny trans. <laughs> I'm still pinning it. God. 10% off satisfied jerky. There's your code for tonight. So, okay, I am going to get the, oh, need to grab the shock piston. Right there, available yonder. Now, let's put on some Eclipse. C-Clips, Eclipse. That tiny trans identifies as a bomb-proof three gear. <laughs> Can't tell me how to live my life. Go. Dropped it. Didn't even fling it. And I found it. What? Look at my luck starting to not shit. Two times in a row. But I can already tell that's not a good start to the night by just dropping it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal with the mullet hairdo? Well, I think you spelled do wrong, but uh, it's just long all over. It's not necessarily a mullet. I'm just deciding to grow my hair long. Why not? So we're gonna put our shock shaft through we have the whole cartridge is out of the bottom at the moment. And we have slimed up. We're just gonna continue to make sure that our O-rings are lubricant or X-rings technically 
are well lubricated as they go over the shock shaft to make sure we don't snag any of them. Are you taking an RC to Cletus and Oh, I wish I was going to Cletus and Cars. It's one of those events that I actually think about, like, I could, I could see taking an, a trip for something that wasn't RC. <laughs> but, because normally that's not something I plan on. I'm like, I only go on trips that are RC related, unless it's a vacation with Nicole. Better not drink till you're done with the snap rings. Oof, I know. Okay. I'm gonna put this guy back on there. Now, I did not put any springs under the pistons or anything like that yet. I am going to build these shocks without any internal springs at this point, either above or below the piston. We in the groove. Um, if I need to adjust things, I will later, but there we go. We're in the groove. Like I said, if I need to adjust later, I'll plan on that. I'm also going to build with the standard 90 millimeter lower rod end. We do have the adjustable rod end tree now, which allows you to adjust the overall length plus or minus five millimeters either way. There we go. Did anybody buy themselves a pair of shock pliers after the scale news? Feel like I feel like these are due to be retired and I say that not because you know they wear out but like you just you start worrying about if these the shock groove areas are getting galled and if you're gonna damage a I mean this area right here is what I used to like pop rod ends in and that is definitely that area is fried. So, um, what is a reusable travel? What is the usable travel of the shocks, Josh? And doesn't say on the site. Um, I can get you a measurement. Did you see the Dixon flannel low rider? I did. I got an email from Red Cat on that. Um, Yesterday, maybe? There we go. Let's put our upper O-ring in place. I don't have any Dixon flannels, although I do like their style. So I could see myself grabbing one. There we go. I obviously don't have myself a uh, Red Cat lowrider at this point, but one of those days, if I find the right one at the right time for the right deal, maybe I'll think about it. Any recommendations for a comp crawler that's not $500? Want to try comp, but not sure if I like it more than scale. Um, you mean like the full-on MOA style comp crawler that I showed this weekend, this week, that video? Um, used, you might be able to find, you know, some options, maybe, but it's tough. If Red Cat came out with a Cuddy or Regal, I'd be all over it. I know, you know, when they came out with the... Uh, Wait, didn't they come out with a G body? Ben, they, I think they did come out with a G body and it it's cheaper too. It's on the, like, the 285 chassis. Um, Monte Carlo is what they came out. Okay. But to me, that's, that's pretty close. 
All right. So uh, someone was asking usable travel. So in a fully extended manner, they are dead nuts, 90 millimeter at fully compressed. They are 63. So there you go. 27 millimeters, right? Yes. There you go. That is the distance. All right. Should we do, we should do the front first, right? Yes. Good call. So I'm going to bolt these in place. Feel like we're going to be a bit tight on that fabricated shock mount there. Are we on both sides? Yes. Okay. Okay. We're all right there. But this shock ball is slightly wider than, <laughs> than whatever he built these whatever shocks that he built these for. We have two options. One is stretch it. And we have more than two options, of course, but I don't know shocks could, I didn't know shocks could have shock. Wait, what? Baja 5B shocks have 7.5. Those are uh, savage shocks, Matt. Just a little bit of a, little bit of a, uh, let's see if it'll tweak. Yeah, perfect. I will agree. I will admit it's not the method that I would suggest to anybody just to go start trying to give your chassis a little tweak, but <laughs> yeah, now that is too long, too long. I'm going to have to get some more hardware that's button head versus cap head in some areas, but looking good. Um, are you excited to see Cletus does in the Nashville short course truck this weekend? Oh, that's right. I actually, I did see that little tidbit of information that he was going to be racing the super stadium trucks there. So, I mean, he did really well the last time right until he didn't. So it'll be interesting to see. Yes. Bro, you look like Magnum PI when you're looking down towards your right. <laughs> uh, loving the Ron Jeremy look. <laughs> Every once in a while, I like to mix it up. Throw the stash in. go now let's see if we get the bottom lined up here <laughs> yes go before anyone else asks where do you get the hardware from <laughs> Oh, uh, dang it. I was going to put that stuff in the freaking description. Tools. I keep forgetting every week. One of these weeks before the stream, I'll remember. And I'll go put the DeWalt and the shock link tools. All that. There we go. Making progress. Miss Super Chef and Jeremy. Oops. Uh, Josh, you keep saying you need to buy new shock pliers, but I still have not done. Uh, can we see a size comparison between your moon buggy and the carnivore? Oh, sure. I bet that's a pretty, pretty big difference. Um, that carnivore is a, what, oh, we measured it last week. It was like 13 and a quarter, 13 and an eighth. Um, 
somewhere thereabouts. Let's get the shocks on this thing first so that it's not flopping all over itself. And then we'll do uh, that comparison. But let me tell you, I'm pretty happy with where that shock made it sit at full, at full droop. Okay. That's good news. Good news. Uh, has anyone had success putting 90 millimeter SAD shafts in 80 millimeter SAD bodies? The 80 millimeter bodies are as, l are as long as most of the 90 millimeter. I, uh, I mean, you could, it, they're the exact same beyond that. So I could see it. Something in Rio Linda is on fire. Uh, odds that it's a chemical. Ooh, one wonder uh, how close it is to Tony. Tony's in the area over there. I'll have to check in on him after or text him during. Yeah, chemical fire in that area uh, is, a, is a certain type of chemical. <laughs> Does chemical, do you mean meth? Yeah. Come on. Get out of there, you booger. I have not had this much trouble getting one of these out before. There we go. Were coffee filters and batteries involved? Are those are those commonly used items in the manufacturing of street pharmaceuticals? I didn't see them using that in Breaking Bad. Come on. Like I said, probably a higher risk of damaging a O-ring by disassembling and then reassembling than my entire point of not putting them together under any sort of pressure. But you gotta fill time on a live stream somehow. That's not why I'm doing it. Just tuned in and the first words I hear is booger. Gonna be a good is that what I said? I can't even remember. Whoop. There's that. I'm driving to work and the truck in front of me was hauling radioactive material. That was fun. I mean, You know, it's like, how radioactive was it? <laughs> how how bad could it be? What's up, Magnum P.I.? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, even, even uh, I will, like, forget what I've done to my face and wake up in the morning, get ready, like, finally look in the mirror and be like, oh, Jesus. Oof. Wasn't expecting that guy to be here. <laughs> One of my packaging girls, I was in the office today. She's like, your mustache makes you look shorter. Like I, I don't know how that's possible, but Okay. Did you lose a bet? No, I did this for a very specific reason. And you'll all see. 
You'll see. You'll all see. But no, seriously, you will all see. And it's going to be awesome. Does, does Nicole call it your face caterpillar? No, she calls it that thing. And she says, get that thing away from me. Team Ramrod. Take our Ramrod. I wrote it down. Do we have leader of cola? I don't know why I've actually got to the point where I enjoy building shocks more than I ever used to. Well, I didn't used to at all in any way. So getting any enjoyment out of it now is surprising and actually enjoying it is totally different. So, oh, times they are a changing, as they said in the great Anchorman. Blind Guy RC, thank you, sir. Hey, it's Josh, the walking hardware store, or Ron Burgundy, as discussed. <laughs> Looks like a fun build. Uh, it was also a blue Yoda, not green. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on. There we go. All good there. Now the rod end. I'm Ron Burgundy. Damn it, who put a question mark on the teleprompter? If you put it on there, he will read it. <laughs> All right. Can Josh spell soup? Mike J, it doesn't count when you put it in text in front of you. you. It's just like, you can't text the word to spelling bee people. They would have the word. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darwin, your, your Brazers video is going to be demonetized that much. I mean, brazing. I should do a, I should do a brazing video now. I should do that. <laughs> this is the time. <laughs> okay. So... We're putting the bleeder screws in, even though, of course, we don't have fluid in these yet. If you do, please put the drum fill in the beginning. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would, I'd have to pay my graphics guy to make me a logo for the intro. I'm, I'll do it. I'll invest. I'll invest in this video. It's a billion degrees outside, of course, which makes for a great time to work with fire, but okay. Is this one too wide as well? Little tweak. It's not a lot, it's just a little. Whoops. There we go.
<laughs> Naughty Torch. <laughs> Okay, I'm excited to see how far we get on this tonight. Um, I think that it'll be get to the point where I can start working on details because I'll have like the I'll have a roller basically together. That'll be. Will I be at Proline BTF? Yes. For certain, barring some sort of wild turn of events, I will be there. Why is this being a bit of a bitch? Can you hear Sookie yelling out there? Oof, that screw is being quite stubborn. In the brazing video, make every single double entendre ever. Like, we're gonna weld this joint here. <laughs> Will you be running incision drive shafts on this? But yes, absolutely, they are right here. Get them put in there. Ooh, I feel like that lock nut uh, is the culprit. I feel like I have a pretty good chance of breaking off this screw in this lock nut. Oof, it is galled something terrible. It'll be okay for now. Got to spit on your hand first. Uh, oh my God. I feel like there's a breathing apparatus mask involved in the mustache mist. <laughs> nope, you'll see, you know, every, okay. I don't know what just happened out in the living room, but something, there was some commotion. Uh, <laughs> Josh is about to go righty Lucy with that hardware. I tell you what, uh, I, something, at least it's not in a spot where whether that happens or not, it won't come out. So cross thread, AKA net. It didn't get shitty until it hit the, uh, actual nylock though, which is what is surprising. I mean, I'm not super happy about it, but. Yeah, we're gonna pop this head off, I can tell. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go, we're almost. God. I can tell I've got a uh several more twists out of it. When stainless binds, it binds hard. That is the truth. I'm going to one of my other type of hex drivers because I can put a bigger diameter handle on it and get some more leverage so I can finish breaking this. Jesus. Will you break already? There. Okay. Remember that part where I said it'd be able to come out still? Kind of lied. I 
think I see why though. I think that the uh, lock nut is sitting like right at the edge of the cage. And I think it's forcing it at like a, like a half a degree off. I hear her out there going somewhat wild. She's driving me crazy. How's it going? Well, I'm struggling, but that's okay. Hopefully everyone else is not. No, I explained to them that you were, you're babysitting the kitten. Or the, not, the opposite of our kitten. <laughs> the eldest. Ugh. Yes, okay. my old lady. This is, <laughs> break out the map gas tort. Yeah, that's a, uh, I'll tell you what, this is kind of a next level pain in the butt. I should have left it alone. She'll be okay. She will be. Oh. But. I guess you had fleas. This is. <laughs> Matt, my travel wife. Right? Oh, I'm glad everyone likes my shirt. Way to go, Kansas. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stop it. Hey. Uh, okay, this is a pain. I'm struggling now. Aw. So. You're sweating. This is a pain. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm like... Alrighty, then. All right. So. You want me to leave you alone? Yeah. You're Otherwise, I'm going to throw something. Donating to pay for my cat. Stop it. <laughs> my $600. You're supposed to make money tonight. Yeah, right? <laughs> God. Freaking vet bills for old cats. Yeah, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is... Uh, like, I'm actually kind of slightly worried about this. Why? Well, maybe not now. Well, I... Oh. Break oh, out the map can. gas torch. Thanks, Jeremiah. They love your mustache. Uh, I think it's a mixed... I think it's mixed reception. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, got it. He just had a birthday. He's 49. Yeah. Grown up. All righty. They I'm less mad now. Don't. Well, sometimes Soki flies off, but not like they do. Not like those cats on the on that you've showed me the videos. Of. Oh yeah, no. I she, wish Soki's a little bit more reserved on the uh, on the wheel than that. Are your mornings dry? Yes. Oh my god. Not waking up wet for me. There we go. I'm just going to leave the screw in for now. Okay. Oh, there we go. See how she is. You good? Yes, I'm good. You got her? Uh, sure. Will you see if any of those... We put some of those other ones in the refrigerator? Sure. In the garage for head. Shocks? Yes, Jonathan. That's what we're working on. Although I just had to fight pretty lengthy with this one because the nut is too close to the tube. I'm gonna have to get one of the uh, half depth ones, kind of like the Axials was. So, refrigerator water? I know, it, this the uh, liquid death I've been drinking refrigerated. So, uh, let's see, Predator or GA? I pretty much always run the GA. I'm not a big fan of Predator. It's just not the compound I like. But the G8 has been my go-to. Liquid death needs to be ice cold. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, at least I've got the front ones on. I didn't check cycle yet, but... It is sitting a little... Oh, it's just the upper links. I think we're going to be in okay shape, though. Oh, 
Josh, your predictions when Tamiya Evo comes out? Bull. I think that they gave a date on it. I think it's going to be like the end of the year, though. They're always so far out on their releases versus actual availability. <laughs> You'll use X-Acto blades forever, but when are crawlers worn out? I've got a really old set of crawlers here, and the only reason I stopped using them is because uh, I get lots of like micro tears in the sidewalls. That's when I'm done. I was like, okay, there's too many holes. And, you know, once that's the case, you just have to, you have to move on. Other than that, like the rounding of, a, of crawlers, you're good. And I think the only truck I've worn out a set of crawlers on in quite a while is my Pro, my VS410 Pro. Um, I just, <laughs> most of my other cars, I don't drive enough to wear out the tires before I change them usually. Where my Pro, like I'll, I'll go through tires. Okay. Still going to disassemble. Come on. There we go. That one came out slightly easier. Did you guys see Castle actually put out a press release, like what, this week that some of the Mamba Micros that they're going to be shipping right now are going to come with a separate external BEC because of some MOSFETs that are hard to get. Like, like that kind of sucks still just because it kind of sucks to have to wire in a separate BEC. Like, but I was surprised to see that. Must be something that was going to be quite the lead time if they decided to go that route instead. Have you used the Axial Trepidors and are they good? Uh, I have used them. Uh, but no, they never were very good. Not the one nines or the two twos back in the day. I don't think they make any of them anymore. Uh, but the one nines just plugged up super fast and just weren't, didn't work that well. And the two twos were like wildly heavy and odd. So, um, no, they just, they never, not a tire I would say was a great tire. Even though I always liked the look of the real Trapadors. The, one, the axial versions never quite cut it. I think the 2.2s had a much better look than the one nines, but 1.9 ripsaws are better. They are better. I can't remember what size that tire was. Four and a quarter? Go. O rings, X rings, proper name. <laughs> okay, there we go. And 
And lastly, we need to put the cap and the last the C clip. X gonna give it to you. <laughs> R.I.P. DMX. Where'd my pick go? How do I keep losing tools today? Did I put it away? I must have. I did not. It's right here. Come on. It's right there. It's right next to the thing. Sookie will not stop yelling tonight. She's in the other room just hollering. She's the loudest damn cat. And she wants attention. That is all you get to hear about. It's behind the turbulent cabulator, right behind the thrust bearing of the... That's one of those things, like, should work on memorizing that whole deal. Mm -hmm. Shock pliers. Way up here now. What's the best way to put pinions on? Um, I guess that's an interesting question. I, I guess I'm can, I'm interested to hear what your what the struggle is with putting pinions on. Do you mean setting the gear mesh, or do you actually putting on, or do you mean like actually just putting the pinion onto the motor shaft? I'm just genuinely curious to hear where the struggle is. Sorry to ask you about struggling. HPI Venture with JS Scale Discovery Body Lessing Springs. Really want to use them, but struggling to hold the rear of the hard body up with thicker oil help. Nope. Oil will not help that at all. It will just slow it going down. You need a stiffer spring. And honestly, mini T springs, you're really limited. So that is, uh, you just don't have the right shock for it if you're running out because mini T springs are not really a great choice for something with much weight. They are made for pretty lightweight applications. So you're probably gonna have to change that. How about inner springs to help? You could, but you're you're really gonna start loading things in weird ways. You're gonna you put too you try and put an inner spring in to help too much, uh, you're gonna end up popping the piston off at the E clip, or popping the E clip off more specifically. Um, but it, you could do it to some extent, but I mean, if you're talking about a hard body like that. Um, Yeah, that's a, that's, you're going to be pushing, pushing the limits there. All right. Yeah. Um, You'll end up popping a lot. Uh, okay, so Gordon Bush, you're you're saying gear mesh more specifically. That's, you know, there's lots of little tricks like using construction paper, putting it between the pinion and the main gear, and then pushing your motor into that and spinning it. Uh, if you have problems being able to set gear mesh, I at this point just do it by look and feel. I can just kind of look at it and just ever so. You want to be able to just ever so slightly rock the spur gear. So that I, you can just tell it's just got a little t -t 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 -t, just back and forth. It'll have a little t -t 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 -t, barely in it. You don't want it to be like a noticeable amount. You just want to be able to feel it kind of like 
hit and release before it. So it's not wedged in. You don't want to have any contact on both sides of the tooth at the same time, because then you're going to have a lot of binding. You want it to only be contacting one side as it goes. So, but you know, the method of like construction paper is the, the old trick. Are those the blue shock caps? Yeah, they are. So. Let's see, agreed. Paper seemed to be too much in most cases. I mean, the thing with the paper is you're supposed to put it in there and like really smash it, um, you know, and it, cause like regular notebook paper is supposed to be like what, three or four thou. Um, and if you take regular paper and smash it, like it can be a little much, but. Let's see. This one, oh, almost there, but still needs a little tweak. It's like not even a noticeable amount. I use paper towels to set the mesh. Bounty or, Sh or Scott, because I can see how Bounty would do it, but Scott seems like it'd be a little, <laughs> I mean, I can see it. It just really though, paper towels do, does seem uh, a little light, but obviously it's working for you. Well, I mean, probably. Don't squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> Bottom line, what's your favorite tire? I don't have a favorite tire. I mean, I really like crawlers in a lot of cases, but I don't really have a favorite tire because it's, it, it's like, it depends on every truck, every size, every, you know, what the truck is like the good. The other thing is like, we don't have to have a favorite tire. You don't have to have a favorite anything. You can run all kinds of different things. <laughs> there we go. Missed opportunity to plug Vanquish tires. Oh, I know, but it's still like, I would, I wouldn't say that the new VXT twos would be my favorite scale tire. Like that's ridiculous. Like, Hey, by all means, I love those tires. They're working fantastic for me, but I'm not going to just say that they're my favorite. Need, need something for everything. I'm not going to put them on this truck. This truck has got to be. This truck to me is going is still scale over performance, even though there's it's a moon buggy and it's hard to, you know, it's got a servo hanging out up here where it's going to be a little hard to hide stuff like that. You just scale is going to be my my main goal. Even the transmission, it has no overdrive. I don't have any. Over, I'm going to have to put overdrive in the axles if I want any because that trans isn't capable of it. So lots of the scale studio. Thank you for your donation, sir. Much appreciated. Thank you. And live chat help too. Yes. Much appreciated. And get in the hole. Got it. Success. So RC Speedy has a moon buggy cage that's similar. Yes, they do. I owned it and I had very bad luck with it. I did not like it. And then I got this one instead. Um, I wanted to like it because it was cheap. It was like 300 bucks. And I was like, that is a deal. And I bought it and man, 
I did a video on it. It just did not fit my particular needs. Maybe it will work for you better. But for me, it was a no-go. Scale Builders Freaky Friday? Did I just hear that right? Yes, Matt. Scale first. That's my... Now, I think that we all know that my idea of scale first is uh, still <laughs> performance first, but with less... <laughs> with slightly less uh, emphasis on it, but... <laughs> like, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's still all of the things that I'm definitely not going to do that would be more scale. <laughs> it's scale performance, exactly. But not the scale performance where these guys are building ugly scale trucks. Gonna make sure we gooped these songs up nice. The Vanquish bot keeps sending me emails to check out. It'll only send you two emails unless you had multiple times that you did it because I set those settings. <laughs> two emails, one a day for two days. Check out and you won't get those emails anymore. Check out with something this weekend, put a note, and I will <laughs> do something stupid to your package. <laughs> because Dan's gone, and that means that we've got one of the other guys helping to pack. And every time there's a note in there that I, he like, he's like, hey, this note says something that that you have to do something to this so josh put apple pay on the vanquish website um didn't i just do that last week no i didn't what did i add i added venmo last week i'll look at apple pay i don't know if i can i think it's a whole different credit card processing and everything so it's like a whole separate system. I'll have to look at it. So if you leave something in a cart for a while, they won't send you a disc. Nope, we don't do that one. We don't do that one. Because otherwise, everyone would just do that. And like... Has anybody else got a uh, a free pit mat lately? Isn't Apple Pay a high ass percentage to process? I can't. That's that's what some of the problems are. Like, it's there's all of these F other things you can integrate into ways to pay, but some of them are absolutely crazy. It's like. The processing percentage can be this, but then there's also a per transaction fee of this as a minimum, or it, it just goes on and on. 
I stop to see if I could do it, but I can't look at that mustache any longer. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, but I could use one. Well, there's still a deal. You can get free pit mats on with your order on the Vanquish site. Alrighty. Check it before we tweak it. Well, this one, is this one good? No, still needs a little, mm, little, uh, got my pit mat with my Phoenix Tuesday. Congrats. There we go. Boom. Mustache, thought that was a wool, woolly caterpillar. <laughs> A woolly, woolly caterpillar. Come on. Can I have skill builders good as my pit map for two? <laughs> <laughs> The old, the old feather duster. What? Yeah, it sucked because he was family. What does that mean? Ah, uh, base. Ah, uh, I don't know what that means. All right. Um, who's your pick for the Sturgis forty four hundred class? Ah, Sturgis. I mean. Seems like Lauren Healy is a, a usually a pretty safe bet. Um, is Vaughn Gittin racing? I think he did really well last time. I don't know if Levi Shirley is racing his new car yet. So many wild cards, especially at Sturgis. Okay. How much does this chassis cost? Um, I'm not sure what the final retail has landed at. I would, Vaughn is there, oh nice. Um, I think that it's going to be around the 800 mark, give or take. But I don't know the final, final retail. Okay. Shocks are on. So we don't need the shock pliers at the very least. Those can get put away. We were going to check the size comparison for Jeremiah next to the, what is that? Carnivore. Uh, how about the driver circus in F1? <laughs> Audibly laughed out loud over the Piastri fiasco with Alpine. Yeah, and then I heard that, uh, did he officially announce today for McLaren? Did that happen? Or did I only see a thumbnail that was clickbait? I felt like I would have seen a real, I only saw one video pop up. It said Piastri was going to Alpine, but. Okay. Yeah, it has, that has been quite the fiasco to watch, though. I kind of wonder what will happen. It was being announced Alpine is taking it to court. I, I assumed that. <laughs> so, this is my UC Fab Carnivore. Damn, it is, it is very close to a, a very similar size. It's all just about the cage appearance. 
Uh, they're both on. They're both on the same axles. The wheelbase is incredibly close. Wow. I thought that this truck was way longer. I know we measured that last week and I think I found out that I was within an eighth of an inch. Um, the, uh, let's fix that. You can see there it's all, it's all about the, uh, the coverage difference though. That's for sure. The width of the carnivore is much wider. Um, a lot more length. It goes way out past the past the axles, front and rear. So let's see if I can get them even. There you go. Uh, I mean, you can see my bumper, which is tweaked a little bit on this side and in the middle. And then the back is almost at the ground there. So it's all it's all in the length, I would say. Wild. That carnivore is one that I likely will not leave me. Rob Montana, fiver for rocking the stash. Good seeing you, sir. Thanks for checking in. So. Getting uh, the ride height's pretty decent. Links are pretty much level, a little bit uphill in the back, which I'm okay with. Um, but flex is pretty good. You get about a tire height or so, right, right near it at the very least. Um, oh, look at that, a different type of spammer. If you guys didn't know that where it says slow mode is on, it is because of the spam stuff. It actually, it helps quite a bit. So it doesn't pop in and flood your chat when it does happen. Cause it does every once in a while. I need to glue that engine together. Still haven't done that. Um, okay. There was more. What do I need to do? Oh, I want to look at getting drive shafts on. And can you just ban users with XYZ in it? We can't. Like, we can add filtered, you know, messages. So, like, certain things can't be posted. But we have no control over anything in the username. So, that's what sucks. If YouTube would give us some control over that, it seems like we'd be in better shape. So we're going to hook up some drive shafts. Oh, I've got my zip ties in. How many shocks are you building? Just the four, because that's all that I need. There we go. I've heard other YouTubers have been trying to talk to them about spammers and names specifically. Oh yeah, yeah, it's. The big channels of the, I mean, God, one of the mods, I can't remember which mod it was. If it was Travis or Vidjo or who, who it was. They'd sent a screenshot from like one of uh, some other much larger YouTubers live stream and the, the entire chat, all you could see was spammers. Like that was all you could see. If there's any benefit to being a much smaller channel, it's that. Matt's stream got pretty hammered on Wednesday night, the mods said. Okay, 
thought maybe you'd build me a set too. <laughs> <laughs> Just free shock building night. Let's see if I can. This is just mock up, but still want to get the drive shafts phased. Oh, this entire truck is going to have to come apart two or three more times for sure but i uh that's why i say mock up like just things that i'm going to have to end up looking at taking apart you know stripping it down for paint or whatever like you know if i if i paint the chassis i don't know that i will i may leave the chassis raw we can do that in California. Uh, but we'll see. There we go. Leave the cage raw. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm leaning that way. go lined up you're gonna have to ooh definitely don't have enough front drive shaft engagement there but we have plenty of rear so we're probably going to end up having to um adjusting well adjusting the transposition is going to be the first step color on some panels but not all I think I, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna kind of make the panels like partially transparent and partially uh, graphic graphic that's a word we are going to mount up the motor spend all that time phasing drive shafts and then I guess take it out anyway so that makes sense use some carbon panels. We discussed this a little bit last time. I think what we're, th what we're thinking, what we came up with last time is do carbon panels, cut windows in the carbon panels and then back those windows with some Lexan. Um, okay. I need to do some math quickly. Let's do that. So, We have calculator, calculadora. Um, currently, I've got all the stock gearing in this thing. I need to pull up the deluxe website, deluxefab.com. Uh, and then he's got a transmission section somewhere. Transmissions. Let's see. Um, What is this one called? Where's the portal trans? There it is, deluxe portal transmission. Okay, on this it shows the possible gear ratios. That's what I needed there. So in the axles, we've got the stock ring and pinion, which is 3.75 to one. I've got the stock portal gears, which are 1.6 to one. But I'm going to do the math with 1.4 because I'll probably go to the overdrive front. So we're going to say times 1.4. That's 5.25 to 1 in the axles. So I want to shoot for 45-ish to 1. So I'm going to do 45 divided by 5.25. That means that I need to have 8.57 to 1 in order to get me to my 45 to one. And on the deluxe website, it says that a 13 tooth pinion will get me to 8.3. And that is, so I'm gonna say 8.3 times 5.25, that gives me 43.6 to one. Okay. 13 tooth pinion, it is. So, 
so I have a bag of pinions that I bought and I need a 13 tooth 15 16 14 17 18 18 13 there we go. <laughs> That's what I came up with. <laughs> Math is fun. I know how much you love powder coated chassis. You should powder coat it. Eight powder coated chassis more than anything. What are the F10 axles made of? What do you mean? What what does that mean? 11 tooth for a slower truck than I'm. 11 tooth for a slower truck than I'm taking to Perlin by the fire. Wait, what? You know what is funny? We were talking about setting gear mesh earlier. When you buy these ProTech pinions, let me take it out real quick. It literally comes with a little piece of paper and they don't say anything about it, but that is for setting your gear mesh. Like that's pretty, that's cool. That's kind of cool that they do this. Do you really hate powder coating more than flex seal? Abso-freaking-lutely. I would, I would flex seal this chassis before I would powder coat it 100% dead serious because flex seal is like plasti dip. You can just blast it off and it's gone. It's nothing. Let's put a little bit of Loctite on this. It would be funny to flex seal a UC Fab chassis because people would lose their minds. So before I commit to the position on the motor shaft that I'm installing that, I'm going to um, put it the motor on the transmission to see where the end of the motor shaft is in relation to the gear set. It's about a sixteenth of an inch longer. So we need to make sure that we set this accordingly. Does this not? Yeah, it does. There it is. But our about like that. Did you ever submit that deal for your free can of steel? I did. And it came two days ago. I keep forgetting to bring it home, but, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Josh will give this a bomber. I'm going to make an interior for this. I'm going to do it. Uh, so I got to know what's in your pockets, Josh. I, I have an, I have a, a, uh, <laughs> I have a confession today. Uh, the only thing in my pocket are my, my Ridge wallet and my Ridge key case with my key. Uh, because <laughs> I was walking out of my office today and my knife fell on the ground. I was like, what the f is that? And I realized that there, uh, there's a hole in my pocket today and my knife fell out. So <laughs> evidently I need to pick, I don't know if it was the crowbar the pry bar that made the hole. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Brought to you by Ridge. <laughs> what knife do I have? I carry a, uh, CRKT and it's, uh, 
uh, I've carried CRKTs for a while, and they've just been great knives for me. I think that I like the size. I love the double lock, which I know a lot of people really disagree with me there. But I really like the double lock. Now you can all go ahead, post your preferred pocket knife, because if any, if we all love to talk about anything, it is our preferred pocket knives. <laughs> I don't blame you, because I love them too. I like Benchmade knives, don't get me wrong, but they're bulkier than I like. I, love, I really like this, how thin the CRKTs are. Um, I'll totally send you a nice new one. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and I'll get you hooked. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'm, I'll, I'm all for it. I'll find your, uh, I'll try and, I'll try and write, remember that after the stream and shoot you a message. Um, but the double lock that I was talking about is uh, on, if you've never used one of the CRKTs, they've got a, um, they've got like the fold over that's underneath the blade like normal. And then they've got a, a little lever on the top that you pull and you, it almost, you have to take like two actions to close it. Scott, I see your message. I'm oh, just looking for my mouse. Um, sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, when you originally built your Brazen C2 with 10.3 axles, did your upper link interfere at all with the VFD motor plate? Mine rubs slightly. You know, Scott, I would have to go back and watch my own video. Uh, I'm, I'm positive that I didn't leave it that way. Um, but I can't remember what modification is. I remember I did move what one I had and I think I used a different link in that location than the normal like box stock SCX-10 2 link set but I don't think that I went any crazier than that let's see if these links or these screws will be the correct length Jesus shave that mustache you look like a cop <laughs> <laughs> what is it about all of us that love talking about our pocket knives? I'm right. I mean, I, you get me, you take me somewhere where there are a bunch of people I don't know. And if someone was there and they're just like, pocket knife you got, I'd be like, this is the best. Like I'll talk, I will talk to that person the entire time like that. That's <laughs> tell you what. You want to kidnap a person? You'd be like, "Hey, I got a bunch of pocket knives in here. You want to check them out?" Like, yeah. <laughs> like, sure do. Let's go. <laughs> pocket knives are awesome. Period. Anyone who doesn't carry a pocket knife with them at all times can't be trusted. Matt can't trust a man like that if you can't open a box like that, I just how can I how can I trust how can I trust you <laughs> Matt chimes in with the one he made like I made this Matt yeah he chimes in with that but then he leaves it in the studio you have to carry it with you <laughs> I've been carrying a knife since I I don't know so I just turned 39 last Sunday, Sunday before last. So I was in high school from 2007, or sorry, 1997 to 2001, roughly. And during those times, I was allowed to carry a pocket knife in my high school. It was fine. I, if there was something I needed, I could, I could pull out my pocket knife during school and do something as long as I didn't stab somebody with it. It was fine. Matt doesn't carry his finger blade. <laughs> you don't remember? 
I remember like 2001, I graduated, but like, does that, does that mean I started technically in 96 or does that mean I started in 97? I can't remember like how the years work out. That's what I mean by roughly President Buck. Nice thing about Outrunners is you can spin that, <laughs> you can spin the motor to like feel the, to set your gear mesh. A little tight. Tell you what, small pinions make it. <laughs> You're 39. God, I look rough for my age. <laughs> Let me tell you, this mustache does not help me. I graduated in 92. Well, what was the Sublime song? April 27th, 19... Is it... Was it 93? April 27, 19... 1990... Wait, what? What was the Sublime song? April 27th, 9... I got two Swiss nice tape. It was 92. There we go. <laughs> there was a riot in the streets. Tell me, where were you? <laughs> I graduated in 2021. Holy crap. But congrats. I look 45, feel 45, but actually 37. <laughs> I was in LA in 92. What? April 29th, 1992. Okay. I was close. Graduated in 2009. I graduated in 82, retired from traffic engineering last year. Well, congrats, and I'm sorry that you, that you had to retire from such an amazing field because traffic engineering is my second passion. Graduated sixth grade twice. <laughs> I'm 39, but could pass for 24. I could pass for 24 when I was... 20 or when I was 17 because <laughs> I had this same mustache. No. I didn't, I didn't graduate. Just got the nod and got let through. Like, there you go. <laughs> Have a nice day officer. All right. Let's re install these drive shafts to each other and then there we go we need to investigate the position for engagement. I need Ooh, it wants to go way over to get that one. Oh, there. Will that guy do? Oh, I don't think it will. I think my motor is touching. It is. Okay, we're gonna put a screw there. That'll give me a place to adjust from. I'm going to make myself uh, a trans mounting plate slash adapter. Okay. The, this transmission actually comes with a little spacer, which I sh if I ran would actually be enough because all it needs to do is come up that eighth of an inch that the freaking spacer it comes with would give me, but that's okay. That's okay. That will actually be perfect. And my drive shafts are almost exactly even. That's a bonus. Well, I scrolled all the way to the top. My bad. People say sir to me now. <laughs> What's going to happen to the beard? 
<laughs> I think that's the best part is people coming in used to the normal waves like Jesus. Okay. All right. So here's where we're at. We've got links all in, drive shafts are in, shocks are in. The links are clearing my motor now, which was not the case, or which was something I was worried about, but we're in good shape. Ride height is about where I want it. Um, so transmission, oh, it's gonna be so nice to have the transmission right there. Buck Dandy, thank you, sir. Uh, two questions, have you ever built in the RC Speedy chassis? And two, what the hell is that on your lip? Because I want one. <laughs> I, uh, uh, Mr. Buck, uh, Mr. President, uh, yes, I did. I did a video on the moon buggy looking one, um, for the capper base. And I had too many issues with mine, unfortunately. So I ended up, uh, getting rid of it. I just didn't like it. Um, why do I have so much rock there? Uh, and then two, oh, it's because of those lower links, uh, two, yeah, it's, it's majestic. I need to name it, I think. <laughs> so you can see that tiny little transmission, tiny little outrunner motor, how low it's going to sit. It's going to give me so much more room for activities. Like there's nothing. I need to find a room. I need to find, find a room. I need to find room for a battery, which, oh, no, I don't because there's a battery box. I forgot that that's already accounted for in this chassis, which is, uh, is nice and a change. It seems like so many times you get these custom chassis and they're like, you figure out where to put a battery. I should have remembered because I drew this battery tray. <laughs> Uh, part of the reason why I have this chassis and things like that is because uh, if Kyle needs some CAD work, I can help him out at times, which is a bonus. If you name it, we can't be friends no more. So, okay, cool. Uh, happy with all that. Uh, I was talking about the axle rock, which is this, and that's because last week, if you guys remember, see those lower links? I didn't have the right length set screws and you know, so I forgot. Um, you made the battery tray, but you put it in backwards. I didn't put it in. He put it in. It goes that way. Thank you. I am 89 and a half percent sure. Are they 90 millimeter shocks? Yes, they are. 90 millimeter shocks uh, set up in the, the droop fashion as people will call them are you going to shorten the motor wires when you do the esc absolutely uh absolutely because i'm going to use one of the teeny tiny little hk hobbies escs which also means that i do have to install a bec in this but i think that i'm going to be able to put all the electronics in a nice little nice little area right up here and i'll make some sort of like carbon fiber um but you hate droop. I agree, but I'm making concessions for this because I'm trying to take the scale style into consideration most. We shall name it Bob. Hello, Bob. <laughs> the, uh, what did I watch tonight? The Hateful Eight? Because I'm a, Tarantino fanboy and uh, the the Mexican's name is Bob Senor Bob always makes me remember that why not rear steer in this um, mainly because servo placement while it would be scale and I'm contradicting myself saying that I'm going after the scale first uh, it's pretty hard to hide that rear steer servo I wanted the engine model back there um, so I made the, 
decision early that I wasn't going to. And I had to tell Kyle before he finished it what my plan was, both for what axles I was going to be using and if I was going to use rear steer or not, because it changes where uh, and how he mounts the 3D printed engine. Name it Bert. Bert Reynolds. I know. It would be Bird would be the more calling it Bird because Bird Reynolds was my original YouTube channel name. But man, I'm liking the way this is looking though. I think that it's gonna, I think that it's gonna be a thing. Yeah. I approve. Bird, bird is the word. Oh, I thought I thought everyone was. I thought everyone had heard. You hadn't heard. Bird, 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 bird. Um, didn't some brand of RC have cable actuated hydraulic steering? Yes, uh, Capo does, and it is garbage. It is not good. Uh, it's been done a couple of times in ways. Um, it's just never good. Panel mock-up now, that is, uh, that's on the list. I feel like there was other things I needed to do too. First things first, I need to go strangle Sookie because she's driving me up the goddamn wall with her meowing out there. I feel like I kind of want to wire up, uh, is that a steel cage? This is a steel cage and it's all, uh, 3 16 DOM tubing, except this brace here and these little guys here, which are eighth inch, um, all brazed. It needs servo mount still. Yeah, it does need the servo mount still. Oh, that's what I was gonna do, is work out the actual steering linkage. Solid rod or tube, it is proper tube. So, I'm gonna strangle her. I'm gonna strangle that cat. Okay, links is what I need, and a servo horn. I need a servo horn. Let's see. Um, Nicole is texting me, which is odd. My phone doesn't recognize me with the mustache, evidently. Oh, Nicole is sending me TikToks. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. We have a problem. <laughs> I am running out of servo horns. Do I have servo horns in here? I do. Not many though. There's one. That should do. Don't need a very long one. I don't even know if I need to worry about centering this servo yet. Wait, is this 25 tooth? Yes, okay, good, making sure. I hope they don't mind my stand. There we go, okay. So let's make sure that this thing has throw. Yes. I can't remember. The reefs might not have a detent. I don't think it does. It does not. Sick. Sick as. We need to figure out our link length. We're going to use the mass <laughs> bark at the cat. The uh, master link thing for, or is it too long? It is... It's too long. No help. Old fashioned way. Okay. I get a dog. <laughs> Tell you what, some days. Some days. So we need to be roughly. 
mm, let's say 87 millimeters eye to eye. So minus 15 is 77, 72, 72 millimeters. That is going to be in the link box on the bottom. <laughs> My dog is so noisy. No, nope, the other thing, silent and asleep. <laughs> okay, so 72. Josh, do you remember the drift car you built a while back? Picked one up, something different to build. Uh, my, the one I picked up was the FXXD. Give that cat five melatonin gummies. <laughs> we use the quick dissolve rather than the gummies. Seems like they give up chewing after a while. So that's 79. That is far too short. It's probably 45, 55, 55. So we need to be betwixt those two. Mm, too long. It's going to be one of those oddball sizes, which may be a bit of a pain. What is this one? What's this guy? That's the same, isn't it? Nope, it is longer. Sixty-two. What did I say? Seventy-two, right? Betwixt two ferns. <laughs> Um, what's the measurement of them? How do you do it? Uh, so I, ha I know this point here, I know this point here, and I measured, I, I, you know, got it as close as I could with a ruler, which has increments of measurement on it, uh, which I measured to be 87 millimeters. And you can subtract 15 millimeters from the eye to eye length to get you a rough link length if you're using standard Traxxas or Vanquish style rod ends. Kind of a, a guesstimation method. It's not exact, but sometimes you just got to get the job done. What I think I'm going to do is serious questions how do you prevent your neck from getting sore while working on, on an rc kit honestly it's just not something i have I have an issue with um i think that my chair may be at a height that is more conducive to it i think having too tall of a chair or too low of a work base might be a good place to start i do notice that i hate working on things when my like I have to work on my lap or on the, you know, or anything like that. Okay. I'm glad your chair doesn't squeak like Matt's. <laughs> this, the problem with this chair though, honestly, is that the hydraulics in it have a very slow leak. So as I sit here through the night, do this, make it shorter and shorter and shorter. We're gonna do a short threading of these to try and get us close to our number. I have a secret lab chair, well worth the expense. So I demand an all mesh chair, mesh bottom, mesh back, because I sit in these chairs for a very long period of time during these live streams. And 
don't, you know, I like it when the weather down south is less humid. <laughs> if, if you get my drift, <laughs> as airflow, yeah, close, you know, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Let me tell you, a mesh bottom, mesh back chair is a game changer. That is, it's a must. It is non-negotiable. That's why he doesn't get back neck pain. His chair shrinks slowly, causing him to sit up straighter over time. <laughs> Just put a fan down there. Wait, uh, well, I would still need a mesh chair then for that proper flow. And I think that the questions of why is there, what's that noise? What's the fan noise? May get slightly awkward. Just build without pants, no heat issues. I stand up too much during these streams. <laughs> that screw is much too long. It's mock up. It's mock up, not a problem. Leave it alone. Ooh, that definitely needs to be on the bottom side. That will look tidier. Yes, indeedy, Mr. Thede. Sick as. Catskins cooling fans are very, very quiet. Hmm. That's interesting. Jinxed Adam and Chips. What did they say? Um. Okay. <laughs> Come on. go. Now I'm free. <laughs> All right. New vanquished chair for those 10 plus hour builds. <laughs> Forced induction. We'd all be like, I get it. I want it. Like, is that 4S capable? Because we need 4S. Okay. Bing bong. Your life. Now I need that shorty link I was talking about. Will that do it? Possibly. That's about as short as I got. Catskins cooling fans are interesting. Looking into it. I, hey, I'm kind of right there with you. Hopefully I remember after the stream. Vanquish doesn't do electronics. Like that. I know. We do have the stage one, two lights, as well as the Q series, though. Like, kind of do. Okay. I know I could just build new rod ends, but not really though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> whoops. Let's throw these guys on. Are your hands, what, what Buck do to his hands? The VP lights for the Phoenix are great. I may be biased. <laughs> the incision light kits are sweet. Those things are, uh, they've been great. They're super simple. Everything's built into it. Gets the job done. It's cheap. They're bright. <laughs> That's a Serba tool in case anyone's curious. 
<laughs> that is counter. It's not countersinked, but it should be. May have to be later. Grab our nut. I was really awakened from a nap to a run an errand that I don't have to run anymore. Return to bed or it's too late to return to bed. Now you just have to stay up until it's time for bed again. I can always sleep. <laughs> See, I'm, I can, I, well, my problem is I can sleep as well. I can power down good, but if it's too late, I'm just, I'm done. Okay. So let's see now what we're doing for those that can't see is I've put the link from the bell crank to the knuckle. See that guy there? And you can see that screw holding up. That is gonna be hopefully for this link to go from there back to the servo horn there. Like, I know nobody liked the bell crank on the TF3, but I'm not immediately anti bell crank. I think that they can have, they can be a good thing. They just have to be done well or right. And RC four wheel drive is not the company to ask to do things like that. Like if they have, if it, if something works well, great. They can probably pull it off. If they have to pull something off that isn't, just the norm and maybe a little bit more difficult mm, highly suggest looking elsewhere so when rc4 wheel drive gets fancy oh boy let's grab a nut driver where'd my 5.5 go there it is Let's put another brick in the wall. I'm here building my second Phoenix kit. Built my first one as a class one. Performance of these trucks outperforming all my other trucks. That's awesome. Happy to hear it. Let's steer that guy down so I can access. My servo is just servo taped into position currently. So, but it's getting the job done. Full lock in both directions. Ah, so right there, I can contact the shock body if I'm steered all the way one direction and flexed all the way that way as well. So that's interesting. I wonder if there's anything we can do about that. Well, technically, yes. I have the ability to adjust my servo position, which I think I'm going to attempt to move to the passenger side slightly more, and that'll fix that. So question, how to set up a winch on a 4 p.m.? I'll run you through this quickly. Timestamp this for so you can go back if you need to. But go into your menu, toggle over until you are on the trim dot slash dial menu. Select that. 
select a button on your radio, DT123, whatever it is. Check that. Uh, select it. Make it say the channel that your winch is plugged into. Scroll to the right, and you'll have the button name, and then you'll have a number. And you need to make that number say 2P, or sorry, 3, or I think it'll actually say 100. I'm sorry. So increase it until it says 100. That's a three position switch. From there, now you have that button controlling that channel as a three position switch. There you go. Trim dial menu, select the channel, go to the right, make that button be a 100 step button, which means a three position. There you go. Different offset wheels or the dreaded wheel spacers to prevent rubbing the shocks. Uh, use wheels with adjustable hubs or offsets. How to make it momentary. Can't do that. Well, you can't without wasting a channel or using a separate, like a slave channel, which that's a longer explanation. That is more than the explanation of a live video. But I actually don't like, I don't use my winches in momentary as often as I would think that I would. So, so unless you're using a super fast winch. If you're using a super fast winch, you almost have to. <laughs> but if you're using the kind of mo most standard servo winches, you're usually fine without. But uh, I keep programming mine to momentary and then I end up using it that way less. But I don't know, it's up to you. I think I do have a video if you search like Fataba momentary wit winch programming. There'll be a very old video I did probably seven or eight years ago <laughs> that we'll talk about it. So, okay, we got steering set up, bonus. We got the drive shafts in. I've got my transmission location knocked down. Happy with it. So that's a bonus. Now explain the momentary on the 7PXR. Like I said, it's a longer explanation and just saying. Um, I was suggesting for the moon buggy. Uh, what? Different offset wheels or the, dr oh, sorry. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't, I won't need that. It, the wheels aren't rubbing. It's the steering, like the actual steering link off the servo that was touching this shock body. So, okay, let's put some tools away. Clear some space. I know I'll need all these tools again shortly, but if I keep putting them away, at least they'll be where I think they are. Shit, I forgot to put those links in the box. I just tuned in. Can you say it's a me, Mario? <laughs> now it looks like we didn't do anything all night. Is a rear winch allowed? Absolutely. It's actually, it's actually extra bonus points. Um, uh, oh, let's see. This is his new C3 chassis that will work with the Phoenix. Interesting. I'll have to look at that later. Hmm. Um, okay. We need to do panels. Now the real question is I normally do my panels uh, like in aluminum, we've talked about doing carbon and such, but I am concerned about being able to get that bend done well and clean in carbon. And either way, I have to have a CAD template. So what is the right answer here? I also have my body nuts back here because I did decide that I wanted to do a panel that kind of came up a little bit and then back. Um, 
what is a moon buggy? A moon buggy is a, um, it's just a term that's used in competitive rock crawling for these single passenger ultra performance oriented buggies. Um, they've just been called moon buggies since like the early 2000s or so. Uh, the Campbells, Shannon Campbell, he had one of the first ones that kind of got that name. It was called Tiny, I think. Tiny or Pinky? I can't remember which one it was. Um, I think it's Tiny that, and it was pink or something along those lines. Um, so, you know, per, excuse my lack of remembrance for exactly what it was. Uh, I did remember something. We've got these scale, it is pinky? God, I thought it was tiny. Um, these Benden, well, they're not Benden braids. They're just the Benden, you have it done, uh, scale metal supply, little aluminum seats, which these trucks would have a Kirky typically. And this is kind of the proper, it's almost the proper seat for this thing. Seating position and all. It might be a little small. They sit at kind of a crazy laid back angle. It's probably close to right actually. It'll be right about there. You sit a little bit up, a little bit more reclined. But it's about the right spot for the uh, the T case and everything. Okay, that's about right. Not bad. Not bad. We might use that. We might have to make something ourselves as well. This is a pretty decent start, but like I, I might need something a little bit more, a little bit closer to, a little closer to a Kirky. Josh, where's the robot? It's right there. Can I? Nope. I wondered if I had like a. Nothing. I don't have enough light to like highlight it. Pinky was a two-seater tube chassis flat fender. Okay, that's right. That was so it was tiny was the moon buggy, the one of the first moon buggies, and pinky was the Jeep. Would a monster truck be considered a moon buggy? No. It's too big. Too big to be considered. Mm. I'm pretty happy with this trans though, other than just having to get it spaced up a hair. To get it in the right spot, that's going to work. Um, got to get some of that stuff there. I don't think I have any Lexan. Uh, you should get a Michael Michael Jackson figure for your driver, the moonwalking moon buggy. <laughs> Maybe alloy panels, then wrap them with carbon look. That's a possibility. We talked about doing carbon and then cutting windows in it. So they're like, cause normally a moon buggy has Lexan panels and they do a wrap that is uh, perforated. Like you would use on the a rear window or side windows of a, a commercial vehicle that would have a printed wrap so that you can drive and you can see through the panels to see rocks and things like that. Um, or they just run clear Lexan panels with some stickers on there for like sponsor stuff. Um, rap is dead, long lip rap. Name it Moonwalk. Carbon is a must. I kind of feel that way too. But either way, I still have to have templates so that I can, because if I'm doing carbon, I need to draw them in CAD so that I can, um, so that I can do do the damn thing, right? Yes, ish. I know what I want to do just because. Let's 
let's, uh, I'm not gonna do CAD work on the stream because I know you guys freaking hate CAD work. But I am going to do computer things. Does a bomber interior fit in that? We'll never know because it's not what I'm gonna use. Uh, but no, it would be much too large. So we are going to have to make our initial panels. Do lots of overlap so that they stick. Forged carbon panels, I know. All right. We're going to cut our panel shape. Almost as if my exacto blade is dull. I did have to do a decent amount of, uh, Tire modification here recently, so. Can you tell Matt isn't watching because he hasn't chimed in about the blade? <laughs> so, simple hood. The blade is new-ish. I, it's, I put it in there last month, so it's definitely newer. Mark, two bucks, much appreciated. Hey, a few bucks towards a haircut you need. I'm growing it long. Gonna become a long-haired Californian. Never had long hair in my life. You know what, no one's the boss of me anymore. He's going for the hippie looks. Hippie locks. Growing my hair long and my beard short. Smelly hippie locks. <laughs> See how quick that cut? What? Say it louder. Does the wife agree with that one? <laughs> the one boss of you? Uh, I think maybe she was the one who suggested it. She was a hairdresser, so. Mullet man, a mullet for sure. Oh my, she would not let that fly. I'll tell you that right now. How are we gonna put these on here so that they can be cut? Just trying to make sure I cross all of the bars. Blonde mullet for contrast. Oh my god. Why not party in the back? Dorky on the front. Retired with hippie hair. Okay. The whole panel templating thing. It's not necessarily fun, but it's a necessary evil in the world of 
when you're such a big fan of caged cars, you get used to it. Okay, getting there. Was Josh cool when mullets were a thing? No, I think mullets were before me. I'm not sure, or at least they were before the time where I made my own haircut decisions. Like, you know what was cool when I graduated? Or when not when I graduated, when I was in, would have been middle school, is bowl cuts, which that is, I feel like that, that trend doesn't get enough hate. Like mullets have come back, bowl cuts, if those ever come back, I hope someone remembers this stream and can go tell all of us who did them at the time, we were idiots. Bowl cuts were terrible. It's, you couldn't be more right. I don't, I honestly don't think, I, I think mullets were Infinitely cooler than bowl cuts. I don't think that there was... I mean, trust me, I don't think mullets are cool. But bowl cuts are the worst thing. What about flat tops? I don't find... I don't, I don't find flat tops to be offensive. I guess I, I never, I never thought flat tops were, I guess I always just associated flat tops with military. So I always thought that they were just like a, a thing that if military people did it for a reason, it was fine by me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't I don't really question military decisions, whether they be shaved heads or flat tops. Like you're an officer, you can have a flat top and slightly more hair on top of your head. Everyone else, shave your head. Head plenty as a military brat, yeah. See, it's like, it's always just what I assumed and therefore they're instantly okay. Okay. How come no rear steer like a real moon buggy? Um, it was a, a couple of decisions that I just, I had to make early and I wanted to keep it so that you didn't have to see that servo back there. That was more important to me. Um, you know, like a full size moon buggy, you don't, like, yeah, you can see steering components, but it's not this massive thing in the back. So it was a choice I had to make. The Scale Studio. Thank you again. Harley Edition 125. Very rare. Vanquish Bomb through three-year transmission on eBay UK. Just super chatted in case you wanted it. One of 25. Very I do remember those. I'm actually, I am surprised to see one pop up. I haven't seen one pop up in quite a while. Um... I, I had one and I actually, I don't know why I allowed myself to sell it, but I did. Had spikes for a long time, punk style, like, like tall spikes? 300 Great British Pounds. Yeah, I think I sold mine for 250-ish. And, but, which is probably why I sold it, but still. The 80s rat tail. I did, there was a couple of kids I grew up with who had rat tails. My best friend in elementary school, Justin Roars, he had a rat tail for the longest time. I don't, I don't even remember when he finally cut it. 
I was a popper as a teen. What is a popper? Like pop and like like a break dancer but different. Or like did poppers like the <laughs> like the <laughs> the inhalant thing. <laughs> Popping bottles in the club like a G6. So this is not the way that I plan to do the panels. Um, I plan this line to be more, actually maybe I can still cut. It's just hard to cut because of the tape, but being not very well supported, but maybe I can do it with scissors. There we go. Now I'm feeling so fly like a G6. I couldn't remember the lyrics exactly. I never understood why it was a G6. Pontiac? That's not cool. Alex, the Gulfstream G6. So that's more how I plan to do it. I'll probably change it a little bit when I do the actual CAD. Okay. My son had a gnarly mohawk when he started kindergarten 22 years ago. <laughs> the G6 isn't a jet though. They stopped at G5. Is it? I thought they went, I thought they're like G8s now. The front quarter looks bulky. Uh, it Well, there, there's tube that whole way, but part of that will come into effect when the panels aren't solid. Like when there's windows and, and clear through it, uh, that's part of it. That's like in the rear one, real ones, it's usually fairly transparent. 3D printed panels? No. No. Absolutely not. We'll do CNC carbon fiber. But first... We've got to put dots. Dots, dots, dots. Who, who knows where we're going? Or who knows, who knows why we're doing dots? No dry shampoo. Maybe still dry shampoo. We're going to try it without it, but I've got it handy if I need to. Okay. Hey, Josh, how's your dad doing? Uh, I found out today they ended up having to go take more bone off of the finger. Evidently, they needed some more trimming back, which that sucks. Nicole told me that today, even though I talked to my dad today and didn't come up. Found out from Nicole, who probably talked to her mom, who probably talked to her cousin, who probably talked to my mom, and that's how I found out. <laughs> Okay. He's hope he's doing well. He's doing fine. He's putting a he's putting the roof on his new shop. He's building a 40 by 60 shop still by himself. So he's not it's not, like he's, not like he's stopping work. He's just cranking along. He's just grouchy about that, obviously. For good reason. So um, you see all of those dots. Dots are for a reason, and it is the reason is they are to help the scanner track it. And I need the adapter. 
for power. So we this thing does have kind of a rowdy fan on it, so apologize for that at the moment. I don't know how bad it will be. Okay. So we're going to switch over. I'll show you guys the uh, scanning side of things just because maybe someone will enjoy seeing it. I don't know. But let me get it loaded first. It's shooting freaking laser beams. So t -t 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 -t. your RC addiction. Thank you, sir. Hand scan Put that down here. And then we're going to you're going to lose me for a second. Am I back? I should be back. There's that. So we're going to get rid of that guy. You don't need that. So this is what it looks like when I open uh, this program. Obviously, there's there's nothing here. You can't see me. What if I do that? Let's I'm going to shrink this so you can see both processes a little bit. I'm going to move that on top. This isn't the most professional looking setup. I know I apologize, but this is the important part of what you'll see. There we go. Okay. So open this thing up. Now I'm going to be shooting in what's called hand scan mode. Oh, I'm going to make a couple other quick changes to this. I apologize. So transform, edit, crop left. Let's go. Uh, what's 400 look like? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, pig. How come you haven't activated your windows yet? I know, I know. Because I'm building a new computer. <laughs> and I'm a pile, I know. All right, so we're going to hand scan. So I hold the scanner upright for that. I'll use the tripod as a handle at times. And for some reason, you have to hold it sideways. I don't know why. Don't ask me, I just work here. So come over here and we're just going to hit scan. I'm going to get the, well, I'm going to get it to the side that I need to scan about like so. It's going to do some calibrating scans first. So I can, oh, there's a little window in the top right that you guys can't see. Ooh. It didn't like that at all right away. There we go. Tracking lost. Ah. Okay. We're going to have to do the thing that I didn't want to do. Well, I didn't initially want to do. Hold on. I'm going to delete that first scan and where to go? Uh, this is dry shampoo. So I didn't want to do this cause it's messy, but I really didn't want to do it in here, but whatever.
<laughs> so that's dry shampoo like girls would put in their hair. You can see it just puts this white powder on it, which makes it less reflective. Use white tape, Nimrod. <laughs> there's a there's a reason for this. While I could, you're probably right. I don't want to. I have blue tape. There, it's picking up a lot better, huh? It's still, oh, I need to adjust my brightness, evidently. Is it working? So the scanning is, uh, not always. I'm going to go just geometry over here on the left side of the screen. I'll try geometry only. There we go. Now it's more reliable. Two, one. So it's a slow process trying to get All of it. Side panels. Then we're going to move to the roof. That's really all I need. So we're going to hit stop. So now it'll do some processing. There we go. Thank you, Phoenix, for handling that. Processing takes a little bit. Um, a different price and Lazy Susan can make it easier for you. Uh, it comes with a Lazy Susan, but you end up with an object this size, you end up having to do multiple scans anyway. I have the turntable, all that. I just don't care to use it as much. So. Here is the initial scan, which that's really all I'm after. I'm just looking for this data so I can see. I'm just using this for reference geometry is all I need. So that is perfect. So we can do thing and go into the editor mode which allows me to, I'll come in here and there's like extraneous dots. You see all this stuff down here, which I obviously don't need. I'll rotate, I'll change my selection style, grab all those, which you can see are red now. And then I'll hit uh, delete selection. I'm just trying to pare down the scan data to only what I need. It'll make it easier on everything I'm doing. Same goes for all of this stuff. Why didn't it want to do that? I don't know. Sweet. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go.
Delete some of that. Scan the stash. You are crazy. Don't need any of ooh. Delete all this away. Just a little bit of cleanup. I'm not going to go too crazy with cleanup because it's not that big of a deal, but. Um, okay, that'll do. And now I can hit process. I do not want it to fill holes. Process. Uh, tch -tch -tch. I know you're pretending trying to manipulate 3D objects on a 2D screen is sometimes different. Yeah, this software also not the best. So we're going to go through some of this. Now, if you are really trying to get, you could go, you could spend time and do multiple scans of this and then stitch them all together if you like to get like super act or accurate or more complete models. But all I'm after is this type of info. It's just, I can bring this into CAD now and I can get the outline of this whole thing. I'll just simplify it. What processor am I running? This is just an i5 in here. Um, so it's nothing, actually this is a Ryzen 5. 2700, not a 2700X or anything like that. Um, I think I've got 16 gig of RAM and uh, M.2. That's it. Nothing, nothing special on this computer. But so now I can export that guy. Export three, let's call it here, and it'll just be the uh, UC fab. There we go. Now you've seen my process. Do you know if the program leans on the processor or the GPU more? Great question. Um, I don't think I have my monitoring software open. I don't. Um, otherwise, I'd tell you. I can't help you there. This program or this computer is nothing wild, nothing nothing uh all that special and it it really hasn't had an issue but <laughs> you can see the uh front of the servo i've got the resolution it was not turned out very high but and it was a pretty quick scan but it's either way it's still to me impressive for what this scanner cost me i like it i think that it was worth it So we're going to, now that I'm covered in dry shampoo, I'm worried about mine. Just curious. I'm running a 5900X, 3080. You'll be fine. It's like, the, there hasn't even been a moment where I was concerned about my studio PC running it. It's just... Now, depending on how wild you get with scans and all that, like if you start getting huge and processing, trying to auto align, it could probably get crazier. But I, I keep a pretty realistic expectation um, for what I expect a, a $600 scanner is going to be capable of, you know? like. Big dog scanners are six grand or 30 grand, depending on what they are. So, you know, I'm like, I paid, I got this 
I think I paid $400 for this because I got like 60% off on Kickstarter for backing it. And then it was a fiasco to get it, of course, because it was typical Kickstarter with issues. It's the Creality CR Scan Lizard. Not the original CR Scan, but the CR Scan Lizard is what this one is. So, okay, that's the adapter. Put the scanner back up there. Did you ever do any iPhone LiDAR scanning apps? Yes. Um, and it worked okay enough on larger stuff, um, but just not that great on anything else. For our stuff, it's just, it's not, not good enough. Um, so, but for like larger, like we were doing the inside of my Gladiator uh, for when we built the custom box for it, we used one of those. Uh, you need the 3D scanner Motobilt uses. Yeah, a lot of those guys are using like the Einscan or the Peel 3D. And, you know, they're like six to 10 grand plus software licenses and things like that. And it just, it just adds up and up and up and up. And it's just like, oh, I just can't. So, it, you know, I, I'm doing it so that I can, like, I'm not making money off of it. I'm. I want it because I think it's cool and YouTube videos are fun. And let me tell you, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make $30,000 off of YouTube videos uh, for RC car uh, 3D scanning. It's just not going to happen. Um, so we have options now. Thank you again, Phoenix, for taking care of the spam. Um, things that we can do. What I really want to do is start drawing the, uh, drawing the panels. Eh. Um, let's see. Not with that attitude. You ain't. <laughs> So we, uh, this is the one, normally the dry shampoo part I would do not in the room and then I would go clean it off, not in the room. How do girls put that in their hair? Also, that shit is flammable. FYI. I'm still trying to figure out dry shampoo, like on the shampoo part of it or how I use it for 3D scanning. <laughs> for the shampoo part of it, it is, uh, it basically absorbs the greasy oils in their hair if they have not showered in a couple of days. You know, the shampoo part, yeah. And so. So Nicole you, does use dry shampoo and I try, I used her expensive dry shampoo at first, which was like literally five, it was, I think it was five times more expensive than this one. Uh, this was the cheapest you could buy on Amazon and it had like 50,000 reviews. Um, and let me tell you, for 3D, like when I tried to use Nicole's, like it barely gave me the white powder. It was just like, I was like, this stuff sucks. And she's like, well, you shouldn't use it because it's $15 a bottle. What? I used two bottles. No, okay. I actually did finish two of them. <laughs> so, you know. Okay. I suppose I can take the panels off now, but we'll just, we'll leave the dry shampoo look for you guys. I feel like I should put polka dots onto the livery now, just because I scanned it on a live feed. The mouse. So going to open that laser beams. 
could you try press and seal wrap instead of dry shampoo and save the mess? It's a possibility. You know, Phoenix was saying, why don't you just use white tape? It's a possibility. Press and seal, isn't it a little bit transparent? But it does have that like matte sheen to it. So I wonder. $15 a bottle, but we can justify $130 servo. I mean, theoretically, the $130 servo isn't going to like, I'm not going to use it up or like gonna, it's not going to be gone in a week like wax paper, possibly. I like it when it's tape though, because it's tape. It's, you know, dry shampoo is just rice starch in a spray can. Where's the ingredients? Um, solvent abuse can kill. Ooh, can kill instantly. And extremely flammable. Okay. Okay. Uh, ingredients. Oh, shit. You know the, th the first three ingredients of this? First ingredient. Butane. Second ingredient. Isobutane. Third ingredient, propane. Like propane and propane accessories. And then the fourth ingredient is rice starch. No wonder it's so flammable. Yeah, it's toxic. It's toxic AF. <laughs> and they're just putting this shit in their hair. Good Lord. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's pretty much just rice starch and propane. <laughs> Does it have the stuff plants crave? <laughs> hey, Hank, hey, Hank that, there's a blowtorch. <laughs> Ingredients include, oh shit, <laughs> a bomb in a can. No kidding. Good Lord. It's coconut exotic tropical though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I got three bottles of that stuff in here. Cost me like six bucks. Oh my God. So, um, I do have tropical propane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to do cat on stream. Don't worry. But I was just going to insert this mesh into my, mm, where's my scans? I have a folder that's called 3D scans somewhere. Uh, 3D scans. There we go. UC Fab buggy. So it comes in, it's usually all in the wrong spot and such, which is the case here. This is the, this is the part that does somewhat suck because you have to, and I, I wonder if, if anybody knows a better way, that would be fantastic. Um, might want to keep the tropical propane away from the lipos. Mike, I mean, you're, yeah, you're not wrong at all. That's the scary, the scary part about this whole thing. Um, and so doing that, and then I usually just set my planes and I'll rotate about that instead so, so it's nice and flat and I just try and get things oriented roughly whoop, like that yay uh let's so next time my girl wants to do her hair just tell her to lean over the barbecue pit. like it's the same thing I read the bottle See, here we go. We're just gonna get this guy down to the origin. Cause I think what I'm gonna do is kind of get some of my 
panels situated. I'm going to go like negative 0.5 degrees. No, negative, negative 1.5. That's about right. And we need a little, little bit of turn and I think we'll be in good shape. Needs like one degree there. Yeah. So we get to save this guy. Um, save this as a uh, UC fab buggy. There you go. It smells like dry shampoo in here. Tropical propane. Lighter fluid and cornstarch, the new dry shampoo. <laughs> it's all about the propellant. I, I feel like you have to launch it out. That's where it really gets it. Uh, is there a servo on axle mount for the ultra portals? Looks not possible, but it would be great if it was. Uh, I feel like someone makes a 3D printed one for it, but I don't know. I have not tried it. I've not looked one up personally. I just haven't needed it, but... Uh... Yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you. So let's see. All right, so that's done. We got, we're at a good place for that. I don't know if there's anything else I need to do for this truck tonight. We're almost at three hours too. So I guess we're just going to sit here and answer some questions for the rest of the evening. Where's the cat on stream? I know. People just, it falls off. People hate when I do it. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a death nail. Every time I try and do live 3D, it just, just, just tanks. <laughs> um, atomization is key to proper hair care and explosions. Who knew? Ah. <laughs> uh. Those people have no class. <laughs> CAD punches interaction right in the mouth. Alex, that's the perfect, that's the perfect way to put it. That is true. <laughs> How much for that truck? Um, let's see. If you're looking at about 550 in axles, probably 850 there. Um, then there's probably about uh, maybe 1700 bucks in this truck so far, somewhere thereabouts. Um, and it's not done. Actually, it's probably more. I didn't count the servo. So the chassis itself is probably around 800 bucks. So it's, uh, I tell you what, I, I wouldn't sell it for what it costs. I'll tell you that it just, I wouldn't, you couldn't get me to sell it for what it costs. It's one of those trucks that I, again, have no, no plans to sell. Did you ever think of doing SCX6 cage build? I did. I have recently thought about it. Um, it's, it's something I am considering. I'm actually, oh, I had an A-Main package get delivered today. I'm thinking about doing a uh, SCX6 video this weekend. Not a cage build. It's another one we've talked about for a while. Look at it this way. Uh, you should give the moon buggy a paint job that looks like the surface of the moon. Uh, white with airbrush craters and whatnot. I mean, there's, I, I see what you're talking about. There's a hum in your sound every once in a while. Oh, wait. I want switching over. Is my sound better now? Uh, the cheater rails, nope, not those. TRX 4K versus SCX 6 pull. Yes, yes, it's still there. Interesting. I'll turn up the removal. What, how's that? We'll see if that fixes it. I 
it's faint though it's fine <laughs> my ac is on the outside of this window but i use a noise removal um sounds like a high gain that's interesting i wonder what that's all about that's new hmm. it's your ac yeah that sounds about right um you're grainy you're grainy so i'm glad to i'm glad to hear or hat here thinking about sound now I'm glad to have the initial setup on this thing just pretty well locked in. <laughs> Decent shape there. Just trying to... So much powdery shit all over this thing now. I do need to get this thing uh, glued together. gonna drive me nuts beam ng tonight i do believe so but i don't think i'm gonna be doing a lot i think i'm gonna wheel with uh or see if they're available and then wheel with the uh, guys i'm gonna probably do like a late live stream again on sunday just one of those like weird times late playing around winding down before work on sunday need to have a driver with an astronaut style helmet i like it we, I mean, if we embrace the moon buggy style or like idea of moon buggy, like it makes total sense. Like you guys are dead on on that. Like I feel like it's a it's a good route. It's probably the way to go. There's so many themed things you could do. Like I should get the uh, the gold foil type heat shielding, right? Um, NASA theme would be cool. Art. That's Hey, for show you. So, this is a wrap that I had done for my EXO, but you can see my logo done in the in the NASA style, and this is matte white with like the heat shielding and all that. Little NASA Harley logos. Something like that, like using those, but more more moon rover moon based i think you're right like and it, yeah i'll find i'll get some of the like metal the reflective gold heat shields and and stuff like that i don't know though then, then that sounds like a lot less carbon fiber and i feel like that's a problem hmm we're gonna have to decide the gold shielding will be needed if it ends up like the last NASA build. <laughs> yeah, like, <urgh. laughs> NASA uses carbon fiber. Okay, like, might, might be worth it then. Maybe we could make this work. I like the themed idea. What do we do for wheels, though? What do I, what do, I do there? That's, I feel like I'm, I have a, hmm. Fill the tires with helium just for the moon bounce. <laughs> Metal mesh tires. Oh yeah. Rover style. Yeah, like what but what are rover? What are rover style wheels? The airless style? Like I can't do that. Lost the love for the hobby. Any ideas to spark it back up? Um, for sure, actually, like, if you, you get burnt out on the, like, I totally get it. Like, all I do is this hobby. I, at work, and then I come here, and it's all, but I do, what I try and do is change what I'm doing associated with it. Like, if I get burnt out on building kits, which I have been for a while, so I haven't built kits on Friday nights, um, you know, like, I'll probably get back to it again before too long. Um, but I was burnt out on building kits for a while. So I was like, I'm not going to do that now. Um, so I got into like working on some projects that I could look at in a totally different way. Um, and that was like, I want to design something or build something. Or I want to learn how to do carbon fiber work. Like that's, 
totally outside of the hobby, but I used the hobby to give it a vehicle, you know, like it's just like, you know, learn how to do CAD or 3D printing, but apply it to the hobby so that you can make your own stuff, things like that. But just in, you know, in a, <laughs> in a slightly different way. Uh, you know, something like that. Like that's, that's how I keep my interest in the hobby always a thing. Um, it's just, I use, I learn something else and apply it to it. That way I get better at the hobby that I really like. Even if sometimes my passion for a certain area or focus of it, um, isn't, isn't there. So, um, that's my best advice. I don't know if that works for everybody. It works for me. Um, and also, if you start learning how to do some of that other stuff yourself, you can make the hobby much cheaper for you because of things you can do yourself. Um, I'd love to learn cave, probably cage building. So maybe I start there. That's a great idea. Um, and if you're interested in cage building or I mean, I would suggest starting with like bumpers or something simple, like a roll bar in the back of a truck, um, things like that. But if you want to do a cage, like you want to dive all the way in, I have a website, it's harleydesigns.com. And on there I have free cage plans or templates. So you can go on there and like it's one-to-one -one templates. So you can bend the tube and like put it on the paper, make sure it's the right size and to help you build a cage. They're free. You don't buy them, you just download them. Just go download them for now. Look at them. See if you care at all. Maybe it'll, but let me tell you, having something to help you move forward with is way easier than like just getting some metal and going, where do I start? So, um, I will also say that, uh, building a cage off of an existing chassis is much easier than starting from nothing. Um, like if you have an SCX 10 or something like that, weld directly to the chassis, just braze or weld, whatever you got to do directly to the chassis, clean off the, the paint powder coat that's on there and then go. So, um, I got to look into brazing. Yeah. Brazing, you go get yourself a cheap torch at home Depot. Um, but it's a, like a map gas torch at home Depot. 40, 50 bucks and you get the filler, uh, filler rod. You can either get it in like rod form with a flux on it, or you can get Harris safety silve, either 45 or 56. Harris is H A R R I S safety is, I think it's spelled weird. It's like, it's just S A F T Y and silve is just S I L V Harris safety silve. 56 or Harris safety seal 45. It'll come in a little kit. It's this little coil of wire that you take and you use like solder. Uh, and it comes with a little bottle of flux that you just kind of goop onto the joint first, heat it until it turns clear and the tubes are starting to glow. Just put it in there and it'll just flow like solder. It's super easy, super easy. Once you do your first joint, you'll be like, this is so much easier than I thought. Like, other than having to have fire, it's pretty freaking easy. Um, I have PTSD also. I ended up all over the place. RC was my go-to for my mental health, but lately, nada. That's, you know, I, man, I, I can see it, you know, like if it's, I, I feel like I'm, I'm surprised myself that I don't burn out on it more because it's really like, I'm not kidding. It's, it's just all I do. I, you know, we go do some other stuff every once in a while. We raced go-karts last night. That was fun. I still like, it was still like, mm, I like RC and though. not going to start go-karting tomorrow. <laughs> don't use dry shampoo while brazing. Top tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then, you know, I do have some other, I like video games, play a little bit of video games, but I play video games that are kind of like RC crawling. 
Uh, sometimes just need to sit back and smoke a big fan and watch Jordan Patterson shit. Uh, Peterson stuff. I don't know who that is. <laughs> and also, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> How's the trike coming? Um, it's my, my chassis isn't here yet. I'm like between one and three weeks out from it being delivered. And then I got to hustle because Proline by the Fire is going to be here before long. And, uh, I'm, I, the trike will be done for my trip to Proline by the Fire. That is for, there we go. I gotta have it. <laughs> the tank for sure. Hey, like, it's her, that's her. <laughs> Uh, will you be setting up a BeamNG server and playing with some of the viewers? I feel, yeah, I got to just, I still have some like learning to do on setting up my own server stuff and, and what best practices are. Um, but once I get kind of a little bit more acclimated to knowing what I'm doing, uh, then yes. Uh, at this point, I'm like super new at, at that server side. Um, Best tip for burnout is to sleep regularly. Pfft, that is not, I am bad at that. I do not sleep enough. So I'm not should be MNG live on Harley's Signs. Sunday night. BeamNG live Sunday night. <laughs> you said three weeks out of a, uh, you said three weeks out a month ago, it seems. Uh, yeah, that's about right. So one to three weeks, right? I was three weeks before that. Now I'm only one to three. So, because it was like 12 to 14 weeks when I bought it. I got burned out in the hobby when I worked at a hobby shop. I'm impressed, Josh, you aren't more burned out given you're in the industry. It is different, though. When I'm at work, I'm not dealing with, like, RC in the typical way. Like, it's manufacturing. I'm, wor I'm worried about keeping a machine shop running or why my high-pressure coolant pump is being sporadic or, you know, like, the, you know, like I've got, like, that. that's the type of things. I'm looking at why an employee isn't doing so. So it's like work is almost separate. I just, everything is we're talking about this. Like, oh, okay. Do we have enough of these wheels? Uh, the, this, well, if this machine goes down, we can't make enough of that. So it's, it's different. It's, uh, I think that is what has helped a lot. The fact that uh, it is RC, but it's, it's like not the type of thing that I'm doing afterwards. It's RC, but not RC. Exactly. It's a machine shop tycoon. <laughs> How sick is this car going to be, though? I can't stop looking at it. I'm super, super stoked. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. It is after nine. I think that it is time that we say goodnight. Uh, do we have enough media for the cleaning tumbler? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I feel loved at work. Just show me some love. <laughs> Stop flexing it and put a hand under it. I, yeah, I know, right? That clip on the lockouts was cool. It's fun to look at that stuff, you know? Like, I'm like, hmm, this is fun. Uh, can you teabag Phoenix at work? I could teabag a Phoenix at work, but not the Phoenix. <laughs> All right. I appreciate all of you guys. Hope you had a good night. Hope you have a good weekend. Um, probably going to play some BeamNG Sunday night live. Um, but that's going to that's gonna do it. So, again, hope you guys have a good weekend. And uh, hope you do some crawling or working on your cars. Maybe it's too hot. Have a good night. See you guys next time.